late. Um, I think that uh, Kevin and um, what's his name? What's Robert? <laughs> We're crying over the lost football game this weekend. I wouldn't know why, so I commend the mayor and, and Jimmy for coming to, coming to face me today after that Auburn took that licking this weekend. <laughs> I wanted to get that in before council comments. But we'll go ahead and get started. We'll just jump right into budget discussions. And I just asked Jill or the mayor if you have anything in particular that you wanted to point to today. Maybe I know that we have a new, new handouts if you want to tell me. Uh, is there anything in particular that changed on this? So we can the front two pages is the, are the edits from when we met with uh, Councilman Conyers and um, Councilman Brown last week. So um, we can go through these edits. Um, in the general revenue, let's see. Um, it was brought up about the expense in the, can you hear me, trash and the garbage cans. And what we didn't put is the corresponding income on the top, if, if you want to go to public works under sanitation, um, because we are going to, we're proposing that we charge the cost of the garbage can when you receive service, new customers. And then um, it was recommended by the recycling uh, committee, newly for, uh, created uh, recycling committee, that we give away recycled bins. And so that net expense is really the revenue makes that almost a flush, except for the recycled bins. Uh, general fund expenses. <coughs> And this is, we went through all of the personnel last week, and um, I think the list, is that in here? The yes. personnel, if you want to look at that. That's where the positions start. So um, that 77,604 that's in the mayor edits, y'all remember um, when we met in the Civic Center, there were a few positions in there that um, we had decided at the time we didn't need. Um, it was kind of a last minute decision so we didn't um, those numbers were not reflected in the budget that was submitted so that's what this is doing here it's taking it out now and I tried to put notes on pretty much everything so y'all could see And so, Jill, all, all, since these are, are strictly salary numbers, you have all of the all of the overhead that goes along with that. Yes, it's all in each department too. Right. Um, if you'll see that, like the payroll the benefits. Right. Yeah, the payroll taxes and the retirement. Um, those are the corresponding um, ones that agree with the that go along with the cuts for the salaries. I didn't mess with the medical insurance at all because it was a position here and a position there. So I, I didn't mess with the medical insurance. I left it as is. Yeah, it's kind of hard to nail that. Anymore. Right. It is what it is. Close to it. Jimmy, is there anything in particular you want to point out on that? Uh, 
positions. Yeah, I guess that's why I went on that. Yeah, I almost right. go back to those first two pages. We spent about three hours on this last yeah, week, and it was pretty much just personnel. So all, all of those are in here. I did add a column to the end that says council edits. Um, see that. Well, not to bring up a real subject that, that brings up some debate, but I will. The, 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 I see a note down here. It says three percent increase of total total city that, salary. I just marked through that. I don't. I don't know how that. Um, I don't know. Oh yeah, that 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 is correct. I was thinking about this one over here. So the three percent on the city and the nine percent for the utilities. What I um, sent to all council to was the um, full full time employees year by year and how they move up. And we know that we had more jobs in 2018 budget. But then in the end, you you can see I don't have it in front of me, but I sent that to everybody that it never really changes that much for whatever reason. So. I think there we're just always kind of in the middle of replacing someone or you know for whatever reason at the end of the year the number of full time did not change much in 2018 and we know that we've hired everybody and we put in a lot of new positions so um, I just went over that just as an FYI I can't explain it and I didn't research it but that was the reality and we have less this time. I think the one change that I remember discussing on the on the positions that I don't see out of here was the police captain position. That's because when, after we talked, y'all said that y'all would consider it because the net increase I explained would not be after you do the shifting around. Um, I mean, I, I think I remember saying that I wanted to wait until the time we, we had everything finalized. You still would keep it in the, the budget. I mean, just whatever, it might not be the full year, but you would still need to keep it because it's not going to be until next fiscal cycle before you make the chief uh, permanent and look at the poss possible other shifting around. And we can't really shift around until that position's made permanent. I wouldn't be in favor of funding it. And I don't, I don't think Councilman Brown was. I mean, I'm just. Reading. I would I would leave it out and we can add it. Is it is it a monetary thing or we could add it later? Because it, it, in the end it won't be because of people shifting around at a lesser salary. We we put on there that the net increase would be twenty, but it's and not, the reality wouldn't be it would be money. less that. It's not money. I'm just not in favor of the position. I, I think that it works well with several lieutenants and they're equal and their duties are prescribed and. When we had four lieutenants, and from talking to Chief Pettis, uh, he was always happy with that. Uh, and talking to Chief Hollinghead, she's indicated to me uh, that she's happy with that 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 current system, and that it, that she didn't believe it was necessary. And so, just upon their advice, I don't, I just don't think that the position is necessary. I'd rather let her change her mind and come back and ask for it than to, to budget a position that could be filled when not in favor of it right now. It's just my thoughts. And like I said, I looked at all other municipalities, and you know, when you have a big department, just like Public Works, you know, you have an assistant who is there to, you know, help facilitate everything, and then someone, you know, in that in that role that is doing the vision and and the management overall. It's you really cannot find another municipality that doesn't have a chief either a captain or an assistant chief because going from that to three lieutenants they're not the assistants they're in charge of departments mm -hmm. so it's it's something that I, d I definitely believe we need is the um special events coordinator for the police department listed here i don't uh, and i, I went over that in detail logistics. also 
the event logistics. Okay, so was this a, now? I'm so I do see a note over there. So that says promote from within. So we're we going to be promoting somebody to do that, and then hiring someone to fill. Whatever. No, she's she's already doing it, basically, and you know the position is an assistant to. Um, investigation but she does way more than that so and so is it a new position you're creating or are you just changing a title and, and changing pay well right now she felt like she could do it all but I don't I think you do need to keep that position open even if you don't fill it this year I don't want to overwhelm somebody I want to pay somebody for what they're actually doing I and that. I don't mind that but I'm just like the captain's position, a little adverse to, to funding a position that I'm not really comfortable uh, creating a whole nother position. I would uh, readily vote on that position if somebody that's currently on the department undertakes that and then pay them what, what, what they deserve. Uh, but the, the administrative a whole help position is in the budget for that. Uh, I mean, so the difference is the increase in pay rather than a whole other police officer position. That's well, everything that's in here, if it's new, we, we haven't adjusted anywhere else. We're not. We're keeping those open unless it says promotion. There's a net and you'll see a net increase when there's not, you know, another position that's going to be filled. So everything is in the budget the way the way it is right now. And um, we are, like I mentioned, full-time employees. It seems like at the end of the year, for whatever reason, it doesn't go up that much. And we are, if you look at the page with the edits, back to the front. It is on the front? Yes, this just says net increase. There is not another position, a replacement right. position in this Well, it's, it's, in other words, we're not, if it's going to be filled, it's in the budget. Right. Okay. Right. It's still it's in the budget. We're, we're only showing increases, and then when you look at the big overall budget, um, wait, wait, wait. here, uh, page five, yeah. you can see, and this we got to have to explain too, but she deleted just to make room for all the columns. You can see um, the council edits. This was the 367,000. This is everything. Yeah, that's is that right? The total expenditures that the council right. cut. And this is just for the city, so it doesn't include the cuts from revenue from utilities, but this affected less of a uh, transfer. transfer from utilities and you can see where the utility subsidy went uh, down from 1.7 to 1.2 million and it is just a remarkable recovery so it's that's really what i want you all to look at is how far we've come and this is you know adding positions where it's necessary because a lot of the things that we're adding are creating more efficiency and, and better services. For the utility positions, all, all utility positions, um, has there been provisions made to show that the labor cost adjustment factor has been implemented so that there's really no net increase uh well the, the revenues will offset the expenses of utility department employees every year well we when we met i can't even remember what date it was now was it thursday i think it was the, or wednesday or wednesday yeah. um at the end of the meeting um i think it was councilman brown that said i want to I'd like to, he said, we can put the fees in there. I asked to put, keep the fees, the increases for utilities, and then take he, out the um I think it was only for rate. sewer. Right, we, we kept sewer. But I think we were not going to do any of the increases for I'm, I'm talking about fees, not, okay. not rates. Okay. Like fees for hookup gotcha, gotcha. and things like that. So, um, and then put in a cost adjustment for 
personnel that's not in here okay. i mean that's by ordinance and right. i don't know that that's well, been we have and part of Robert, that's me I mean, to blame for never circling the wagons with he, he you know put this together like i said but i mean it's, today. A, it's an ordinance it's a, like an automatic every year I think it's that not we, even you don't even have to come to council jill just automatically right. whatever that number changes a, by a, a amea um will cover that um study to, to get the exact figure for us they will reimburse us for it so we will put that in do what now? Who, who? the the rate uh the is it called the labor cost adjustment labor cost adjustment uh, permission to speak yes <laughs> labor cost adjustment i don't think amy has anything to do with that that's okay. more of a levelized billing uh account that builds over the course of the year since power fluctuates, uh, fluctuates right. over time they, they bill us the same amount and they set that rate a little bit higher than what they hope the average is going to be so we get a little buffer mm -hmm. built into that account and i think it's been about five hundred thousand dollars the last couple of years but the labor cost adjustment is it's it's a kind of a complicated formula in that he you know what historically is done is it's just been prorated across the rate for usage there's a base charge associated with you know rates and then there's usage rates and some of those usage rates are sometimes staggered so the front end usage is a little higher than the rear end use so the large users don't get penalized necessarily by paying the same amount for the commodity because you know once the commodity is all, all the base cost of providing that commodity are, are taken care of then you just have the production cost of that commodity and so you want to give the, the break for those higher end users but anyway what i have done in terms of additional labor is we looked at a, a tech assistant that would be somebody that could do some inspection work for us, somebody that could be the front end on some of these projects in terms of what utilities are available and how they would be managed in terms of the project. And then we looked at uh, additional workforce in gas. We've got a lot of annual maintenance requirements that we, we continue to fall behind on i think right now we're behind just in running services and trying to catch up with that so we're we're falling further behind on our annual maintenance uh, so we're looking at three additional people in gas we're looking at three additional people in wastewater because of the rehabilitation work we're going to be taking on and, and some of the structure we're going to have put in place to i want to add this real quick on the tech position and i explained to councilman conyers and brown that um that's not in here but we're adding it after we get a comp study and a job description because um councilman brown said he did want that in here yep. and that was that explanation i told you about the inspection yeah. part that of it. i used on the on the water wastewater and gas techs i used a job grade of, of a 16 job classification 16 and the middle rate for that which added i think about thirty two thousand dollars per uh position and then i added a prorated amount for uh the, the retirement and the health insurance and all the administrative benefits that we get with employees and i based that on the, the factor of our total labor costs to administrative costs from the last previous year so i divided the, the administrative cost and I had a 1.35 or I forget the percentage right. number but I multiplied so uh, and so then what I did is I took the labor cost and administrative cost last year I added that number to that amount for this year and I used the labor cost adjustment formula and like a you know and, and I dusted off the old spreadsheet right. we did before yeah. and and so there's options in that where you can just strictly do base charge and, and when you look at this sheet, you'll see that, you know, for, for, for example, on the electric, for the residential electric, the base charge is 922. That it would go up to 942 if you just did the base charge. And then for gas, it would go from 896 to 1029. 
uh, and, and that's a higher increase because we're adding more labor costs to the gas. Let me go back to for uh, for Jimmy and Jay's sake, and you know we we talked this about this for three years now. I'm gonna go back if I may give you a real quick review mm -hmm. on that. The thoughts were, and this will be to one of your points, Mayor. Several years ago, was that the city would add employees, the city would give employees raises, and I'm talking strictly the utility department now, okay? Because it only applies to the utility department. And there's a reluctance on the part of politicians to raise rates. You're reluctant. Mm -hmm. You are. I am. We're all reluctant to raise rates. But I'm if we not. continue to give, if we continue to give raises and we continue to add people, you have to you have to pay for it. Now you pay for some of it through growth. The growth. But sometimes you don't always recoup what what you put out additional. Mm -hmm. So the thought was, if we don't have a taste for recovering all these expenses. We'll put in this labor cost adjustment factor, and we went through several consultants, and mm -hmm. it's been done, and we studied all this. And so we implemented several years ago what was called this labor cost adjustment factor. And without going through it, like Richard said, it's a pretty complicated factor, mm -hmm. which includes base rates and fees. and, this, and it's, it's fairly complex, but once you go through it a few times, it's, it's not terribly difficult, because you, you only do it once a year. And it's just one little, you know, I say complicated, but it's just one equation. So if your expenses were for uh, employees' salaries for across the board, let's just say, were a million dollars in the next year, they were a million and fifty thousand dollars, then your labor cost adjustment factor and that fifty thousand would include salaries, benefits, and everything else would, right. would, would take care of that additional expense through revenues. And if you pass the ordinance, you don't ever have to worry about falling behind, behind, because we have fallen behind because that wasn't implemented for a long time. Rates mm -hmm. stayed stagnant, which consumers are really, really happy about and politicians are real happy about. But the infrastructure starts falling behind because you didn't keep up with it. So this was intended to help out with that. And I know for the past two years, what I've cautioned is being so reliant on it that you, you could potentially add more people than you need because you just go, Jay, we'll give you 40 people. We'll, we'll recover the cost we, with the labor we cost. We are not adding that. more, believe so, me. No, we're just, we're, add, we're asking bare number. minimum. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making up an absurd number because you, you could, it could be abused and just right. say, we don't really care how many people we hire. We're going to have somebody to look at every dial because we count that. You don't want right. to do that. So that's the danger of having that. But the benefit is also is if you're, if you're down employees, that factor, it's theoretically can be a negative number. Um, so I just, I say that because when you look at, and we're talking about positions, especially when you're talking about utilities, it's, um, it's not a, it shouldn't, it's designed to not to be a drain on, on the budget. Now, general government, you know, we're, collecting more property taxes, we're collecting more automobile taxes, more lodging taxes theoretically, although I hear it's gone down a little bit. Uh, that takes care of what we need in public works and sanitation and city employees like uh, finance director and treasury department and stuff like that. So I want to just kind of revisit that. I think it is absolutely imperative that we include that labor cost adjustment factor and in fact it's not even supposed to be debatable unless we change the ordinance it's you know it's right. supposed to be implemented well let me ask is, is the formula established in the ordinance that this is the formula to use yes it is. okay yeah yes. Here, here's the ordinance and, and that's the formula for it i think item c on there and the biggest issue i've got trying to go through there is it defines base revenue requirement as one of the factors that you compare your your potential new revenue or new expense for labor compared to last year's expense for labor but it really doesn't define what's included in the base revenue requirement because you know you have power costs you have facility costs you have all sorts of other base revenue requirements that they can change too and if you if you don't lump all of that into that base revenue requirement, you know, like you also have additional customers that increase the base revenue, and and if you don't have it all put together, you're just raising rates to raise rates versus being able to raise rates to serve a purpose, which is to make sure you have enough money to not only include your your labor costs but all of your operating expenses as well as your capital improvement. 
And, and I think that gets back to this cost of service study that we're talking about trying to implement in, in all these departments so we can establish a more defined structure as, as to how, how much do we want to charge everybody for what it costs us to do our business whether we sell any utility or not, we're still going to have some people that are going to be maintaining the systems and doing things. And then as you start to get to where, okay, well, how much of that allocates to your base charge and how much of it allocates to, you know, the first 10 percent of everybody's usage or the first 20 percent of everybody's usage. So you're fair. And, and, and the purpose of doing all that is to make sure we have a fair allocation of cost so that the, 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 the individual residential customer isn't necessarily being supplemented by the high user commercial customer and, but you know, and you're never going to be completely fair but but you can look at everybody and you know when they ask you about your rates and say yeah this is how we charge y'all and and it's fair because we, we have these numbers that that validate it and to give you an example of what some of those numbers look like i think the last time rich and i sat down and attempted to run through right. that equation yes the numbers are like 0.3 percent 0.7 there might be one one of them might have been like one point it was one i'm kind of well off, and off the, like one and a half percent and you calculate it differently for each utility so yes okay and that's what i did so i put three in for wastewater one in for water three in for gas and i just i didn't put anybody in for electric because we haven't got to that point yet but i did allocate twenty thousand dollars of the technical support guy the tech through through all departments so i got an eighty thousand dollar accounted for in the the total of the four departments right. and right. so when you do all that though and this is what it gets back down to where this this uh if you look at the far end the new base rate would you know as i was saying before for water for instance would be 1063 as it is now versus 1083 so you lose 20 cents. Wastewater is going to be the biggest one because we're having the most employees added for the least revenue generating service. And that goes from a 1374 base rate to a 1492. And, and then you decide, well, do we want to go ahead and say, okay, well, you know, the, the rate increase we talked about before was to say instead of offering 2,000 gallons as part of your base charge, you just give a thousand gallons as part of your base charge then everybody pays the extra thousand gallons worth of usage which, another, and, and that's and that's everyone. just a different rate concept but it accomplishes the same goal and and no matter if we go the the base rate route or some combination of base rate and usage with with the the labor cost adjustment you know applying once we get the cost of service study done then we'll have a better feel for where these rates ought to be moved in terms of being fair to all the customers can you on that lca get within 10 percent based on data that you have now though and based on new employees yeah. in every department i mean you that's know what, it's a, you're trying to hit a moving target right so i mean you just got to pick a baseline that's right and these i think what, what and, we're talking and do about your here. best and get within 10 10 15 percent right and i think these are the, these numbers here but there, there have also been positions that have been defunded and you're trying to put a couple of them back in but you know in the process of, of talking about rates and uh we we, we want to benchmark against other utilities we want to we want to sure. see you know where we compare and and we're not trying to do that so we can charge as much as we can we're just trying to do that to make sure we're not charging too much and if we are we need to figure out what's wrong with us you know but right now i would say from my you know view of other rates we're we're below average in water and wastewater gas we're a little below average and electric we're, we're right there on target for the most part but a little bit over when you get to higher usage customers and that's just where we break down i mean that's just where it is but when we do a cost of service study we'll be able to analyze you know where should all these customers be and, and then how would they fall into you know rate comparisons to other utilities whether they be local Baldwin County utilities or statewide utilities or regional utilities. And we the cost compare. of service study is reimbursed yeah. by AMEA. Oh, and another thing, right, but the other thing that you can do to, for this LCA is you don't, you don't have to recalculate it every time you hire somebody or somebody oh, no. retires or somebody resigns. Right. Because then you'd be calculating it right. every three, four weeks. So you do it, you do it right. maybe 
every four every months, every four to six months. I don't even months. think you do it. Uh, I think that every couple years budget, right? is what well, um, right I ask. Budget, if you did it now, then you'd be increasing rates for maybe 10 people that hadn't been hired yet, and that wouldn't be fair necessarily to the consumer. And I want to do it. I think it would all come out. I want to talk to Derek Lee. Was. He said they do theirs every couple of years. But I mean, if we were to put in for a lot more hires because of all of the infrastructure upgrades, then I would recommend doing it again next year. Yeah. Well, it just it depends needs, on where you are. Is it needs to be done if we're not doing it. It, it has to be. Not even needs to be done. It has to be. Is that something that should, you and Richard Peterson can sit down and, and calculate and agree to what that labor cost adjustment factor is yeah. prior to us patching well, the budget? He even said that that's missing a lot, though. Well, the, the simple well, question he said that you I, can get within 10 or 15 percent of the adjustment. Of, of we're just about for adjusting. personnel, that, that calculation does not include o of their other overhead. But if he can get within 15 percent of a number, we're talking about a half a percent change and within 15 percent of that number it's a pretty small if, if we can get it done by an entity that does this and we get reimbursed for the cost i say let's do it that way and yeah, we we'll have the study done for the electric now amy is not going to reimburse right. us for the gas water right. wastewater but they'll reimburse you can, us for you, the you can do it then for the for the others but i yes. think that as long as we can get reimbursed it's not going to cost it's us anything it's, only a, it's just not a richard what does it take you to do one for a department a, a couple of hours Yes. No, that's only a couple hours. Jim, can, can I see that? Because yeah. speaking of that, how, that's, how that's often. That's the ordinance. Now, and and right. this is a copy of the labor cost adjustment from the template that I made on the spreadsheet. And, and I, you know, won't say it's perfect, but it, and it needs some tweaking, but if you can pass that. And, and it's got the existing base rate, and it's got what the new base rate would be if we just strictly based the increase on changing the base rate. Well, and the, re and the reason I wanted to look at this is because we're sitting here debating as to how often it should be done. I'm just curious as did the ordinance say how often it should be done? I don't know that. He's got it now. J Jay's got it. But the biggest this thing is, is, only, is defining, is defining what the base revenue requirement is. This That's is going to be the biggest the challenge to making it because no, if we're adding new customers and adding new revenue, it really doesn't factor that in as much. Jay, I don't know that it'll say in there if, if you do get all of it. I think the intent was at least once a year was the intent. Yes, yeah, it, well, it just says the base rates may be adjusted periodically to account for permanent permanent changes in labor-related revenue requirements. It just seems like doing it at the time you're doing the budget would be the appropriate time to yeah, well, adjust it. Here, here's the rest of that. that, yeah. that periodically to account for permanent changes in labor-related revenue requirements that come about as a result of budget actions taken by the council for a fiscal year. So it seems, based on this, that it would be in response to budget actions in a fiscal year. So it right. seems... But I think you wait, and then you pass the budget, and then you calculate it, because that kind of fixes the what the budget's going, what you're expecting to spend that year, right? I mean... Yeah, I mean, it, but I mean, I get your point that it would be premature to base it for positions you're not filled. But I think that's the point is, you know, that right. You're, you're, you're in anticipation of anticip if, if positions are approved. Yeah, once they're approved, I think you do it right after passes of the budget. That's yeah. what I would say. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. that's when you calculate it based on the anticipated filling of those new right. positions. All right, I can send you those. Uh, spreadsheets and you're welcome to play around with them and, and then I can also document the, the the added revenue expenses for labor that I included in each utility and, and what those stand for. I'm, la I'm laughing because I'm sitting here thinking about the people that are watching this on the live stream and how exciting listening to this must be. <laughs> I know, right? I mean, discussion of, especially of, since of, there's of, no display of what I mean, we're looking at. <laughs> and it's shocking you know, how many people I run into that say they watch these things, and this particular discussion has got to be just the most exciting that we've had Maybe in quite some time. Maybe they're trying to go to sleep, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me want to just go ahead and get y'all to pass the budget so we don't have to have them anymore. <laughs> you, you might be right. <laughs> so anything else on those first two pages, Jimmy, or Mayor, that you want to talk about? I mean, just the, the one was the police department. I think where we landed was removing the captain until later date, and then I think Robert, Robert and I both were 
on board with the event logistics. Okay, well that makes logistics. two of you. I mean, okay. I'm just saying that. that right, right. I, I understand. I think we, that was our thought was go with that one, but but scratch the other. You and mean, reconsider. You mean, when you say on board with the, just so I the event logistics. And I don't want to speak for Robert since he's not here. But is that for a, for just a promotion to that, or for for creating a whole new position? It's it's a promotion. Think, yeah, yeah. I think, was, I think the way this is a promotion is how. Yeah, I mean the way this is discussed. written and, and based on the, the things we talked about, since it says net, it, if it if it was just if it was a whole new position, it would have the entire it would have to have the entire salary. And if this is just a net increase, the only difference is the promotion. Right. Right. Well, not necessarily because if it's a promotion. The other position is in the budget, and I'd, I'd, I'd have to look and see if there's any that are not. Right. I think there are some. That's if you can look at it. Like it's it's already worked into the budget. It was right. already there. Right. But do you want to give them like a, a, an example of? And, and some of those positions are in the utilities that I didn't include in the a call, in the rate adjustment because. They're already budgeted from last year. We just happened to lose, you know, like the line we lost or the wastewater operator and the, actually the two superintendents, too. We just haven't, we're looking to promote some folks, but we're not really looking to fill that position. Fill the vacancy. Here's right. one, uh, dispatch supervisor. And that's what makes the labor cost system even more difficult because until you get the numbers at the end of the year, it's just hard to know. And, and, and Richard, that, that brings up a good point is one of the right. things the mayor said, it, right. and, and it, I'm sure it's in here, and I just want to make but sure I'm understanding it right, is that she said that there were some positions in utilities that were defunded that we want to bring back. And I'm guessing two, two of those would be the uh, superintendents the that, have, that were taken out. We're, we're looking for more technical assistance type folks and that would be more uh, in SCADA and in mapping and we talked about that and more technical mm -hmm. services so that they can support all the utilities and we can you know gain you know if, if we can have a technically capable individual that can help us implement SCADA software can do extra mapping work for us when we need it and then get involved with uh, helping support engineer design on new subdivisions. That, that, that would take a load. And, and that person can transition some perhaps into public works on occasion too. And, you know, it, it's just support we need. So look at page 45 if we want to go through that. Um, do you have what we're looking at so you can be on the no, same right, page? No, I don't. Yeah, we have a set right there. Here. Okay, so one of the things we'd be bringing back the assistant electric superintendent. Yes. Okay. But that's just a promotion. That's uh, not a new position. Well, yeah, no, no, oh no. yeah, it says net increase. But I mean, well, the position is new, but the person right. wouldn't be. Well, it's it's new. It's just well, it's new because refunding. it was right. It's new to this budget because it was not in the last one. Right. And it has just the net. Gotcha. Well, so if there's someone promoted from within, and their position has to be filled. Well, that's what Richard said. Well, this is the assistant. We're sure. talking about the assistant electrical superintendent being okay. filled with somebody from within as a promotion. Mm -hmm. okay. The electric superintendent was still funded from last year. Right. Mm -hmm. and well, the, what I'm saying, though, if you do that, because Let's just say Jay is in alignment and he gets promoted to that position. Now Very you have unqualified for that. Is open. Very much. I'm not just using your name because you're sitting there. Yeah. So, if, so that me. position's open. Does that old position need to be defunded because it's not needed? In in this particular case, probably so. Okay. Because they will fill the role of partially what that position entailed, but this tech support we're trying to get will help. Fill the, the the voids that yeah. will be left and what that. And then my concern is is just it's obvious is that you know we don't want to create a vacuum where then those positions where somebody gets promoted gets we decide later that okay that we didn't expect it in the budget but now we have an open position and now that whatever that position 
yeah. is vacated to be promoted well, is now because we created a new position. Mm -hmm. But I don't think the salary changed. is appointed for it. Okay. Well. Yeah, because we're only budgeting a net gain. We're not budgeting the entire portion, so there right. wouldn't be enough to cover. Right. We're not well, asking for. We're not position. asking for a new. I'm not sure in this in this case if it. Uh, it's probably already in the budget for yeah. that too, but it just could be defunded. Right. I'm saying what you're looking at right now is the most. I think it makes sense now. I'm yeah, telling, I mean, I, I, it she is said. the most, because I mean, she has to assume a lot too. Right. She's not taking anything out, mm -hmm. but more than likely there's some things that need to be taken out. Yeah. 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 It would make sense if there's right. a mechanism, and I don't know if there's an easy way that once that person goes in there, if there's just a note, Right. I think we can do that next year. Their salary is now included in that assistant right. superintendent. I think we can do that next year because every year we add a little bit more mm -hmm. that, well, I didn't think of that. Well, so. and, and we've started working on organization charts too, so you know, and you know, and there's a complete structure of the department from, you know, the, the individual departments and then each individual department has a different, you know, uh, organization structure. And then we're looking at those departments in terms of personnel and we're looking at, you know, right now we can look at this organization chart and see that, you know, if this is our five year plan and, and we're short three or four people on in electric, for example, then over the next five years we want to try to get to that point. And so that's what the purpose of this is going to be. Is that in their book? And we're we're looking to, uh, no. and I don't know if y'all need to submit to this, to or if y'all would like to look at that or whatever. He did but, this uh, earlier in the year. So. Got a copy. Uh, sure. I've got one copy that's in color, and I, I can, uh, I can, I can email those to everybody though too. So, and I will do that. Because that's that's not what's in the budget, but that is. That, that where would be we'd like our to be. plan to be where we need to be in the next five years if not sooner depending on how generous we feel at the time you know how long does a, a person remain a gas service line tech trainee two to five years oh that long huh mm -hmm. okay what's the next step what's, what's the gas service tech one and then probably gas service. and that's the other thing we're trying to do with with the organization chart now we can start looking at job descriptions that allow you know growth in each of these uh, job descriptions so if you have a gas service tech everything will start with a trainee and then there'll be a tech one tech two tech three but and, and then you get to you can have crew leaders you can have cdl license you know requirements you can have other qualifications with master plumber or apprentice plumber and all of those credentials should give people an opportunity to to expect and anticipate more pay and and if, if we can get it to that point and and some of these budgets you may you know you may see that we, we will have uh, in terms of merit increases there may be an extra lump sum amount and that would be to to take care of the people who have desires and goals to reach certain credentials over the course of that year and we just like that to be something automatic we've got one fellow in the gas department that got a master gas fitter like uh, almost a year ago and we, we just haven't been able to do anything for him because of the, 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 the way the budget system works out and you know so and, and a merit increase or, or even a cost of living plus merit just isn't enough to reward somebody for becoming a master gas fitter and we just now i mean that's just how we need to be and you know that's part of some of the issues we have with people wanting to look at other places and i mentioned that last time we talked there were people who have left for better wages and you know well, i'd like to think that people would come to us for better wages at some point in time and i, I would like to think that's how we can get to over you know some period of transition and when we all feel good about the, the organization structure and, and what we're able to accomplish with the people we have I think, and i think it's not just pay looking at just the overall compensation because you have to work here how many years to get an increase in vacation 10, Ten years i mean you know the, these things are important to people too so it's just looking at the whole package to right. be competitive But I appreciate y'all. I appreciate the time you're spending in doing this, and I know it's difficult. 
uh, you know, I, I, I hope you think that, that everybody in our department and, and the other departments with us here, we're not here to squander anybody's money. I mean, we're here to, to provide the best service we can and, and recognize there's limits to all of that, and that's that's what our goals are. And it, it, it shouldn't be hard to do. <laughs> well, I was going to mention, too, about uh, positions and promotion opportunities. It's hard to think of all of those things at budget time, and I think we should just, as we come across these things, talk about it while it's happening. Because it's it is it's almost impossible to to think about, and it would be too late, I think, if you saved everything to the end. So we're just going right. to have to to all of us. Do and our even part things and try that we started see. planning in June have changed. You know, I mean, there's pumps that are going out that we need to get replaced that now, and we didn't think they were going to go out in June, but and and there'll be more pumps that'll go out in December. <laughs> That's just the way it is, the wear and tear, and, and how we're able to put in a line item for that type of work in here that we don't have to worry necessarily about whether it's an emergency and whether we have to get it or whether we can go through the process of getting it you know I mean it just makes things easier if we have some allowance for that too but and, and we'll we'll try to help get you know the explanations and in the and the, the situations that arise that allow us to, to have the opportunity to, to do this thing you know, reach out and, and order something we need and and y'all feel comfortable with us being able to do that so mayor let me ask you this there's um you got 34 full-time positions you're requesting six part-time you look at utilities and there's really mm -hmm. if you take out the, the you know four of the 14 or our promotions from within there's really only 10 positions in utilities out of all the departments that are being requested so that brings us back to 30 in the general government. I want to look all the way ahead to the following year. What's that year going to look like? We, we can't grow 40 people a year. But like I'd mentioned in that, and that's what I have to pull up, when you look at the full time at the end of the year, I mean, you remember it us going that flows over. and I don't You know may that. hire 30, mm -hmm. but you may lose some to retirement or. In uh, last budget too and it's still and we have hired made those hires but we're talking about what's budgeted though I mean, but if i think well, yeah i mean what we discussed was if it's, she it's went with, 2018 was the same way if we had a net 30 new positions we wouldn't end the year with net 30 new additional we didn't people, in 2018 i don't likely. we hired all the new positions and like i said i don't I, I, I emailed. Well, let's say we did. Let's say we did increase by 40 people. I'm going to look toward to the next year. Yeah, we I think we expected to add 40 people in the next year too. I would I mean, say I know we're growing. I'm not saying we wouldn't add any, but I mean, I would say you wouldn't add that many. We're not mm -hmm. growing at nine percent a year. Like our, if our employment's growing at nine percent a year. I would say if you if you added 40 or 30 positions and then that number it was that net at the end of the year, I would think you would not add that same number the following year. Well, but I think one of the things you got to look at when you figure basing it on growth, you'd have to look and go back 10 years to see if we have grown 15 to 20 percent in, in employees based yeah. on what we have. In well, that's the reason I asked the mayor, because that's one of the things that she's been saying for two, two right. years is our population has boomed and our number of employees has been pretty stacked. About the so same. So if we make a big step to catch up, mm -hmm. are we catching up or are we going to see this again next year? Well, like I said, the, when it when it's flush, I think it's a it's a combination of when somebody retires or leaves for, for whatever reason we're looking at that position at that time to figure out how can we do better and I think in some cases we have been able to just redefine that and even with some of these that, that I explained to you, it says 10 new positions, but there are some of these where it's a new position, but we're not filling another. I mean, that's really what we have to, well, to look at, too. I not count any of those in which the net increase wasn't okay. full salary. I, I, I okay. subtracted those. Okay. Well, then you got three of these, three of those that are school resource right. officers, right. which are not included or shouldn't be included because they're not reimbursed. Uh, wait, I'm not sure. That may have actually been a note that said they weren't included. 
It's just saying that five of them are PD. Well, and in, in the utilities as as case, it may become an issue of, of what what no, your no, no, expectation no, no, no. is for our level of service. No, I mean, we, you know, we have a level of service expectation that dictates we have a certain response time to new customers. In the new position. And, and we have not including technology we have to start to look at in terms of the SCADA system and the mapping system, and we have to decide, I mean, it, you know, do we want to continue to integrate that technology into the way we operate the system, and is that going to help us save money over the long run, or is it is it just keeping up with technology? Because that's what everybody demands. Yeah. I mean, once you get, you know, you start down the trail of all that, it, you, 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 and, and even in terms of how we communicate today, you know, we, we're kind of victims of the technology that's evolved with social media or, or you know, with the way technology works. It's just you, you almost can't be without it. The way we read meters, the way we bill people, the way Some we allow. Some of it's a luxury, though. Some of it is still a luxury. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, but we, we want to be high tech, but. You can get into IT where it's just to make somebody's job easier that may or may not be necessary, and, it, and, it, and some of this does become a lot. And some of it becomes regulatory related, and, and it's almost sure. like you're forced to because of regulation. That's our job is to ask these tough questions because, you know, we want to make sure we, we trim the fat. Well, I have a tough question for you. I've got the scouts are coming down to the wastewater plant to look at it this afternoon. Jimmy, I think you turned. That's today? Or? Yeah, that's a regular meeting day, so I'm okay. going to go down and meet them if, that's, if, if I can do that. I think you should. And we're looking forward to it. They'll enjoy it. They're a good group. They ask a lot of questions. We've got a microscope waiting for them with a lot of bugs underneath, so we're going to see how they do. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you, Richard. I mean, does anybody else look at those numbers like me and get a little concerned when you see 40, 40 new positions or 34 full time? Look, I think if you go one. We were in the position of trying to create 30 to 40 new a year, then I think that's concerning. That is concerning. Um, but I think it would depend on what they are. But didn't we create about 18 or 20 last year? I think we probably did. I think that's right. More than that. That's what I'm trying to pull up. I think the, I think the, pro, the proposed was around 30. I thought it was around 30, and it, we cut it to about 18 is what I thought. Something, that's, call that's, it 20, 18 to 20. That's my memory. Two. Yeah. Um, so, so that's what I'm saying. If you had 34 new full-time positions this year, and so that's 54 in a span of two years, to me, that's alarming. This is, I know, one of those are, well, I still think you got to kind of look at it historically to see if we were, if we, if, we had, if we had, if we had hired the amount of people to kind of grow with the growth of the city, and we had been kind of getting there along the way, and then we have these new hires, yeah. then, then we're kind of out growing the city yeah. in our government. But if we hadn't, and this is catching up, then it's mm -hmm. less. But that's how it's being presented as catching up. It, it is, but let's also, we, let's go back and talk about that technology discussion again. You know, technology is designed to save manpower in a lot of cases as well. We are going to be doing that with the training of Munis because we're, we're all on Munis now, and I think that will definitely help too. But it, it's going to just help us define expenses better because as work orders are created, um, legitimate expenses for each department are going to become more and more transparent. Because right now we're working off of per percentages because we don't know exactly. Hmm? Let's think about that was created last year. Okay. It's about that. That fits. Yeah. Within five, ten percent. Um. So, I mean, she's pulling this up, and this is so twenty. Um, are they full time, or do you know? Um, let's see. There's only one. But then, when you pull up the end balance from 2017 to 2018, the net difference was like two. 
Well, I don't, and, yeah, I don't know. Right. And, 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 and there's no way to predict how that's going to happen each year because you don't know who's going to leave and, and, and kind of what shift there will be. But, you know, when you kind of look at this from two different perspectives, um, from, from the employee's perspective, from the maintenance department, uh, from the utilities department, they'd rather have too many than not enough because they want to make sure that they can do all the things that they need to do. From the, from the perspective of, of paying the bills, you'd rather have everybody be a little too busy than have people sitting around without right. enough to do. And so right. it's really kind of finding whatever that, that balance is in, in that, those two numbers. Um, you, want, you want there to be enough people to do all the jobs that need to be done without working them to death, but at the same time, you, want to make, you don't want to have idle hands right. on the job. Well, either. we're kind of restructuring things too. It's not, you know, customer service is not going we don't have a call center and we don't have we have customer service per department but not everybody's trained in general knowledge for customer service and that's we're getting ready to start training so there will be one line with a rollover and you know those those people will have general knowledge we'll be able to use our the software that we have to make sure that we can track citizens as they call and if we have a couple of calls that are similar that they can look in teams and find out okay well in this department this is an FYI that's going on there so we're taking the employees that we have too without adding and trying to streamline some of these things as well to be more collaborative but um, the people that we are adding if, and if we go through each department it is for police it's because we do need no more patrol we need you know the, there are legitimate needs in in here if you take you have public works too that's really defined by the level of service and if Richard Johnson's here he, he can tell you how how much we increase every month in services and, and so all of his positions are defined by population and customer service um, so when people think it's all City Hall that's just not the case it's for police public works utilities that's the majority of it So let's talk about that then for a moment. Public works. Okay. And the sanitation hoppers. That's to eliminate the uh, need for for the inmate inmate program. Yeah. Inmate program. Which I am strongly in favor of. Why are we doing that? Because it's inconsistent yeah. and um, there, well, there's some he can better. <laughs> yeah, you, some of the, We're better off with yeah. doing it this way. Well, convince me. Here we are. I mean, is there a secret out there? No, he'll, he'll tell you. And he explained this in his presentation. Uh, you know, the biggest issue is, is one, the, the workforce reliability has not been good. Uh, we've had, let's say, some incidents that have not been good uh, using these inmates. I understand that, you know, in the way that we uh, use them, they are going and doing residential service so um, and uh, th the biggest challenge that we've had is for example this year alone with weather conditions we've had a number of days uh, that inmates were not available to us for example if the winds are are blowing at 30 miles an hour we'll probably be told that they will not release the inmates tomorrow so that means Who makes that, that decision the actual work camp does they you know if the okay. temperature gets above a certain temperature or below a certain so we're temperature, not getting them from our jail no, no, no. This so is coming from the tell state them camp, and uh, we thing. pick them. Have to pick them up in Locksley at the state camp. So and drop them off. Yeah, y'all do that every single day. Every single day. Every day. Um, and so you're saving some money. Mm -hmm. Well, and understand. Also, we pay the state 
$20 per inmate per day, plus we have to provide them a lunch during that shift. So I think those lunches are like $5 or the Hungry Man meals, whatever. So, you know, they're not exactly 100% free. There's the $25 per inmate plus the round trip transportation there and back. And we've had some criminal activity um, that has not reflected very well on public works, and there is a concern about a liability there. Um, so that that was you know that was a a request uh, through our sanitation and, and I do concur. Uh, we believe we can eliminate the inmates completely from the public works operation with with three hoppers. So this is their full salary that I'm looking at on here. This is not like over and above what we'd be paying for the use of inmates. No, this is replacing that system, and in the department it includes that everything. Really, is not much money at all. Yet. Correct. correct. Probably not much at all. That's correct. Um, it's it's not a completely financial wash, but it does. Uh, there is a pretty good offset there, uh, and Council the, President. The additional reliability and the mm -hmm. reduced liability. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a, well, it's a pretty when they can't come, then we have to work overtime. Work overtime, overtime, or we're pulling uh, horticultural crews or whoever's available to go work as hoppers. Um, and I'll kind of quick go through here. So that's only three. So. Is that about how many a day we get from the county? We kind of, it's one of those things is that that number changes day to day. Um, we have gotten as many as, as, as six to ten in the past, but that's when we were doing a whole lot of, of uh, recycling, sorting, and things like that with the system that we've got in place. That, that requirement has, has greatly dropped. Um, and we've had two assigned to go assist with the body shop and I'm not sure that's been the best use of anybody's time, uh, inmate or otherwise. So this is just kind of cleaning up that process. It doesn't, that's not much. I just didn't yeah. know why the change. Yeah. Um, on the other jobs, uh, you do see, and I don't know if the, the memo got, we did have a request for a new litter control position, but we did, I did send a memo after spending some time with Paul Merchant. He would prefer to eliminate that position if we could upgrade the gardener apprentices to just gardener once, and that would be an equal to or less than offset. In Public Work Streets, the Carpenter 2 yeah. is just, again, being able to have more frontline services for construction and maintenance in the street department. Uh, as I recommend the mayor, uh, the mechanic uh, is a position that if if we need to start eliminate positions would be the first one we'd recommend to eliminate from the request uh, that is that we have an individual that holds that classification today who's probably getting ready to retire but he has not worked as a mechanic um, and if he does choose to retire which appears that there's a, a, a high likability that then we would have the ability to actually hire a mechanic in that in that position that becomes available. Can you go back to that gardener one? Where is that? Trade the litter control, Trade the litter control like for an increase in gardener apprentice to gardener one. It's right yeah. above the sanitation yeah. the I see the litter control. I just didn't see the other. No, yeah. say He's saying drop that. <coughs> and if we can yeah. increase gardener apprentice to gardener one. Yeah. Right. No, Council President, I'll tell you what, this is what's happening in our horticulture. A gardener apprentice and a gardener one all does the exact same duties, meaning that they're working in the greenhouses, they're propagating plants, they're doing the change outs, they're doing the trimming, edging, mowing, everything. So we have two job functions that are that they are 100% fulfilling the same job functions, but they're graded out and, and positioned as, in, as two different pay scales. And it's uh, the, the gardener apprentice is most of them make less than $10 an hour. I think two of them were below 10 and one was just slightly above. How is that many correct? apprentices did we have? Three of them. We have three. So when, three. Yep, just, just convert those to gardener ones because that's really the job they're doing. And, and when I started with HR and discussing it with Jill, I said, well, let's, let's talk to the council about just looking at gardener apprentice and increasing the pay table to try to to fix that because we've got some really good employees that are making nine dollars and 43 cents an hour and they're doing the same job as the guy making eleven dollars and 23 cents an hour uh, who may have been on the job the same length of time um, but the problem with looking at raising the pay scale for just one grade then you got it, every grade that has above that it that would so 
the recommendation from HR as well as, as finance is that maybe they should just be moved to, to an existing grade that would uh, take care of that. And that was Paul Merchant's request that if that could happen, the litter control, he'd be willing to have that one be eliminated from the budget. If, if, why did they put it in there? Did they not have a need for the litter control? It's if just we're going to promote people and give them more money and they're going to do the same job. And why was the litter control position put in and request to begin with? See, either there's a need or there's not a need. And, and, and promoting somebody and paying them more, in this case, not every case, in this case, doesn't necessarily mean we're getting more taken care of. I mean, I'm listening to your recommendation, but did, you know, did, did we have a need for litter control? If we do, I mean, I'd be in favor of keeping somebody out there picking litter up or either and if they didn't have a need then i think why did it get put on there i think this was a position that was requested last year that didn't get filled we've managed to to take care i think we've done a good job keeping our litter abated on our streets and i think that the uh the the horticulture supervisor feels that that if that money was invested in those gardeners apprentices to upgrade in the gardener ones that that's the, that gets you an outcome that continues to get them working even harder, uh, and and that type of thing. And again, I'm I'm gonna, you know, take his recommendation in, in that that we've managed to maintain the litter, uh, uh, clean up to an acceptable letter with the current resources. This is an area that we're we're afraid we're going to lose good employees if we can't uh, get them um, uh, some compensation that's more reflective of the work they're doing. And it was not a, it's not a big jump from uh, Apprentice 1 to Gardener 1. Uh, and, and, and Richard, you said if there was one in here that you were going to lose, it would be the fleet maintenance mechanic because you it's have already somebody. Been cut. Right, it's already. Okay. If you look at the far right okay. column, okay. see all the jobs have been cut. It's you. We, we have oh, okay, I see it there. I'm sorry. And, you know, the, the facility maintenance, that's, that is one of those areas that we are definitely stay behind in um, and again this was a request through um, our maintenance supervisor that to be able to add a second team uh, would be a benefit we did add one person this last year so now we have a supervisor and a team that work together um, and you know there's no doubt that building maintenance is a high dem demand area and um, a, lot a lot of the streets crews end up fulfilling a lot of building maintenance functions um, you know so um, and again that would be probably the next area that if you know that if that's too much of a request one technician is is better than none um, uh, they tend to work better in teams they work out of a truck but uh, we can always gradually approach this and talk about the second team member the next year and then the other one, and, and this is just an additional carpenter too. That's a skill position in streets. That's uh, it's a it's a misnomer in our laboring. A carpenter too may be strong in masonry or concrete, wood, and that type of thing. It is a tradesperson, and we really need to continue to add in that area. That's our biggest demand: is just being able to repair things in house that are associated with drainage, roadway signs, and that type of thing. Very good. Y'all have any more questions for Richard? I don't. Thank you, mm -hmm. Richard. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate all you do. I know this yeah. is not fun. Oh, it's no fun, trust me. pause for a minute because we're, we're kind of coming up on the end of our work session but since we have department reports on the agenda are there any of you department heads that want to come up and talk about your budget area again real quick any of you I come up here and explain what yeah okay. and utilities I mean unless you'll have a problem with utilities. no I think we were good with all the I mean is there just maybe so. one that well, if he'd rather have. I'd rather okay. he's going to give him an opportunity. I think. I, just, I didn't think that was that wasn't anywhere we were no. thinking about cutting. So. 
Not, not really, no. But I think it's it's sometimes good to be educated on that. So. How are y'all today? Doing good. Doing good. good. Um, I guess in there I'm asking for three and one's going to be a replacement. Yep. Um, so if you have any questions, I got something to pass around here. This is just showing, can you take the passing around, please? This is showing what we've done, what we've accomplished since 2016, 17, 18. Kind of base why I'm wanting extra people. Thank you, sir. Um, as you can see, just like this year so far, as of October, we ran 38,000 feet of two-inch gas main. That's with a three-man crew. <laughs> They've been working overtime. I don't know if you can see the overtime on there. It has went up um, drastically this year. Um, we're having to do overtime every week. Um, that's not going to do nothing but get worse. Uh, right now, we've got 31 services that we're behind, say behind. I'm within two weeks running eight subdivisions that we got on the books. Three more were approved today, so that brings it up to 11. Our maintenance is zero. I got one person that's trying to accomplish all of the regulatory compliance, and it's no way. Um, the, as fast as we're growing, being that we work all over Baldwin County, there's just not enough people to keep up. I think we, our recommendation was to give you the positions you were asking for because it sounded like you needed them. Yeah, and, and there again, you can see with the gas meters that we're improving, we're increasing them by four or five hundred. It's going easily going to cross five hundred this year, mm -hmm. and that's the increase of customers every year. I mean, how many people are working on those? We've got I got fifteen total, three men on each crew. Um, right now, the new ones I got this year are working on that crew is training. And then there, my goal is to move him into maintenance and then put the next new guy in there training also. Are you having to sub anything <coughs> out at all as far as repairs go? Not as of right now, no, sir. Um, we need to, if, if we can't get the, the people. If I can get the people, that would give me another crew to run services and another crew to do maintenance. Do we have that overtime number, Jill? For, for the gas, for the gas. department, yeah. like as of right now? Mm -hmm. I can pull it up real quick. Looks like it was like 53,000 in 2017, and we're already at 65, over 65 this year. The only thing we will have to contract out is uh, relocating or actually lowering the gas main on the right of way that has got to be done i don't know i gave each one of y'all a booklet and it's had some pictures in it um and it actually shows pictures of the right of way pipeline mm -hmm. that's right. that's got to be put underground Sixty-nine thousand, roughly and over time just this year mm -hmm. i'm not real sure if that includes it some of that's on call and can't be prevented. Yeah. Um, there's a percentage of that that's never going to go away. Uh, on call would be like, was like 20,000 this year so far. Still so about above two that. Of those positions. Mm -hmm. Well, it's well, too unloaded, though. But you, and, and, and I know that I'm not saying we work them to death, but it's, you can't look at it just as salary because you're not The on call is going to be there regardless. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. You'll pay that once. Still significant, though. In, in addition to the money, I mean, you got men that are out there working themselves. Well, they need silly. Break. Right now, the same guys, yes, sir, they're yeah, working I mean, right now. Yeah. I mean, that's part of the consideration, too, is, is overworking our people. Well, that's, <coughs> that's every department you talk about. Right. Well, well, that's what yeah. I'm saying. I mean, yes. That, that it's not just a monetary consideration. You got people that you're talking about, too. Right. Yeah, it, get, it kind of gets burnt out, you know, on a weekly basis. I, I know the feeling. Um, thank God I got some good guys and they volunteer, so they're alternating pretty well. Um, it's oh, just so keeping up the with the service, sir. So they want the overtime? Uh, well, they would like to have it, but they got to have it. I mean, we got to do it. 
Um, like I said, right now I'm three weeks behind just doing services. Not say behind, but that's my schedule, just to keep up. And that is working until dark every evening. Where's his put mine over yours. <laughs> and the two minutes of paper I just handed you out here, the gas meters, the inspections, and the leak calls is all done off of one truck. I got two men in that truck every day. If one of them calls in sick, it, it's just it's, it's, un, it's unbearable um and then on the leak calls if it's something that we have to repair i have to pull them off of either the maintenance crew or I say the maintenance crew the main crew or the service crew so i'll tell you my own opinion that, that, that year in year out your budget's pretty reasonable I don't think that we've ever come in here and just, you know, ripped it apart. No, I appreciate that. I agree. So I'll ask you this. Is there anything in here that you think that you might could do without? Is there just any? I, I, I hate to ask I you spent that, a lot. I guess i got to ask you that. I, oh, yeah, that's fine. I spent a lot of hours trying to go through here and trying to see what I could, could not use. I, mean, um, I don't really see anything, just to be honest with you, that jumps off the page at me. No, I'm sir. I'm worried that I can't find anything. I'm dropping I'm one of the big trucks there. and replacing them with two small trucks because I could get an extra crew. And that's going to be almost the same amount of money. Got to find something. It's, ridiculous. it's probably going to be, you know, 20000 more, but it's going to be worth it. Well, the biggest items are those lower on the uh, gas lines. You've Which got to is, do that. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, that's, and that's a third of it, really, is a third of the budget. It's just it's yeah. those two items. So. Right. Yeah, and that's carrying over. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's carrying over from last year or so. Right. It's just needing the people to, to do it. Right. Yeah, we're going, and, and it just goes up every year. It's, to get somebody back there is, is going to be the, the job. What is the Mini X? It's just a Mini X evader. We have one oh, out excavator. split between three departments. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I should have that was a good abbreviation <laughs> there. <laughs> hey. I some shorthand. Got right a shorthand no. somehow. <laughs> <laughs> you did. This is last year capital budget for that department, Jim. Last year's capital? Yeah, for gas. That column's in the original one. That is, is it in, my other is it in the original one? I may, yeah, yeah, I may have had to uh, hide that one if because you know where it's at, we'll they that. get so ridiculously long that. Yeah, I understand. Um, Yeah, I can't 
15. Just general officer, you're in the capital section right now. <coughs> what, what, just, what are you um, Just wondering what the total uh, request was in 2018 that we approved. Oh, okay. No, it doesn't look like there's any hidden columns, but what I can tell you on the 2018 approved that is requesting again is 422,414. That rolled over. Right. That's the rollover amount. Do you know the total? Look, look. Let me go back and I can pull it from the last year's budget. Just unhide that column if you pull it this budget and just unhide the column. Yeah, I, I, there I were no hidden ones. I'm just oh, pulling up okay. last year's budget to see it. for the total. Utilities gas here. Um, <clears throat> it looks like it was 459 464 This doesn't break it down. This is just the approved rollover, so it doesn't right. show you. It was, it was only 459 and we rolled over 422 Maybe we spent, maybe 459 is what we spent in the 422. Maybe it was eight something. That's kind of what I'm thinking. You think that's what, 836 eight, or something eight like that? 870, and then we, we did about half of it. <clears throat> about half of it had to be rolled over. Yeah. Whatever was approved in 18 that didn't get done that they're re requesting is that 442 914. And the 459 or whatever is what did get done. R right. Okay. Y'all have any other questions about this? Mm -hmm. No more? No, I can't. Thank y'all very Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Oh, Go ahead, of people Go getting ahead. up now. Uh, <laughs> here we go. They think we're in a good mood. Here they come. I think everybody needs to take a chair. Yes, we're good. Yeah, you can check. <laughs> Since where is this? Yeah, you're on the agenda. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I, I knew it may come up yeah. in the agenda portion, but still there's a little bit more. So here. Thank you. I think there's two. Thank you. Uh oh. Maybe I've got to keep one. Oh. You've seen okay. it. You've got it. Yeah, I mean, if you don't have enough. I've got, I've got, um, okay. I've got on my computer. And then you have this too. Okay, we'll take this and pass it around too so we can get over it. Right. I'm going to keep one of them. There you go. We can share this. Which one do you want to talk about first? Let, let's talk about the events, just because uh, it is on the agenda tonight. Yep, that's a good Just idea. roll through it quickly. Okay. Um, we talked about getting it approved in advance like we did last year yep. because there are items we need to go that's ahead and order. Okay. Yep. I don't think there's anything too surprising there. A couple of you have asked me about the lights, tree lighting being different, but you know that was transferred into electric, the electric department. So that's why it dropped so much. 260,000, 70,000. But I did notice on the resolution for tonight, um, it talked about approve, the exact wording is, it refers to approving the events budget, but one thing I talked to a couple of you about, but not all of you, um, is that the promotion of the events is in this tourism communications advertising portion. So if we approve the events, but without the 
promotional part of it, we won't be able to advertise to get people here. And this is really to promote shopping around the holidays and things like that. And if I could break it up, I, I would, but it doesn't really make sense to break out that portion so if of I'm it. Looking at that second page, what mm -hmm. line is that in particularly? So in particular, we're looking at this um, the, under the tourism, the Coast 360 video production, hospitality, those the, unfortunately, I mean, the Coast 360 is something we have to do all at once. And then the video production, that $10,000 is for four videos throughout the course of the year. So we could pull out a portion of that, but I don't know how much the first one will cost for the holiday video. And so the extent of this advertising, as you will, under this tourism column will be uh, as you described to me, this would be at the at the Gulf, and mm -hmm. uh, is there you know anywhere else that it's going to be spent? Hotel rooms, condos. There's a, print ads. I It'll mean, be I distributed. Mean, uh, other than at the coast, but so the, the, what you just said right there, hotel rooms, the print uh, ads, right? So all, all at the coast, or no? The print ads go throughout the state. Okay. Um, the videos are aimed at the the Gulf Coast area. There's a map okay. of where all they go, but it's pretty extensive. So it reaches, you know, condos, hotels. The only thing I'm a little bit concerned with is that, you know, if we had it out right now, October is a very, very busy month down there. In fact, it's become one of the most popular months of the year there. November is a very slow month, and December mm -hmm. is even slower. And uh, if we, we spend all our money in those slow months, I don't know, we'll reach somebody, but you know, where you're at, in July, you're at 99% occupancy down there. Right. I would say in October, if I had to put a number on it, you're at somewhere around 80% occupancy down there. Right. For, for most weeks, it's like this week, Shrimp Festival. Yeah. But then in, in November, that drops down to 20%. Well, right. but, you're, but we're really approving this for next year, too, though. So right. We, so we might miss for this for 12 swing, months. But, it's oh, for 12 but, months. You, but you'll be hitting it for all next year, though. Right. Yeah, but and the budget starts October 1. But this is printed material per event. It's not just about that regional stuff she's doing. It's per month, per event. Right, the, but what I'm saying is you're, you're saying since it's October 1st, if we're advertising for the holidays, we're, we're kind of behind on that for this year, which is correct, right. but we'll be ahead of it for 19, 2019. I got you. And, and we're ready to go, but that holiday when what we I do we're thinking of while. doing is like a 15-second <laughs> spot, a shorter spot. And we're also going to use this on social media, I and mean, we can push it out in a lot of different ways, not just through uh, Coast 360. But they'll be our primary push for all of this. And we're, we're testing this, and I think, Jack, you'd asked me, yeah, I you wanted, know, you data. Know, kind of ROI on this, but mm -hmm. it's a lot. I mean, in yeah. the grand scheme of our budget, $65 million, is it a lot? No, but is it, is it really going to, to drive people here? And then you've got to ask yourself, well, is it going to drive people here? Are they going to spend money downtown? Are there even hotel rooms available that time? You know, it's a busy time for us mm -hmm. here, and, and our hotels are full, and we're limited. So how much more do we make off of that? I think this is targeting the, the family that's in town for a beach vacation, and they need a day break <laughs> from sitting on the beach and trying to figure out what to do. Yeah, I exactly right. understand what mm -hmm. it's targeting. I'm just wondering, is it, is it worth it, though? I said, we, and I told, like I told you, we could try it once, but I'd like to know, you know to measure it. And we are, and, and I told you, we met with, um, you know, Dr. Cummings about tracking that information. And the data is really difficult to track. We are getting some interns here during arts and crafts to help us develop a tracking mechanism just to see. But we can't separate out the sales tax revenue or uh, the revenue by event in that way. We, it, Jennifer and I, it, it, it can be do. done though. USA can definitely help USA us determine. Help us. Mm -hmm. what the impact is monthly financials and see if there's a bump too yeah and that's what the simplest in simplest terms you right. Do that. right and that's what we've been talking about so we will do that again and compare it that way but we can't get as specific as i'd like yet shirley what is the miscellaneous contract writing services so i th am thinking that that's something we're not going to need because right. you approved that contract already yeah that's kind of what i was mm -hmm. saying I think, so yeah, i think that can because i'd ask that too so. i think that can come out in the resolution is this attached to the resolution lisa 
Okay, that's right, because you said it was excluded. So right, we that's to why I wanted to come up. Communication, advertising, and PR, and we can put an exhibit in there and then strike that out if we had to. <coughs> Do you, that okay. Like 36,000. That'd be 36, yeah. Remind me, Jim, when we get up there to, mm -hmm. to make an addendum and add this, okay, to the first page. I think it's a good idea to, to enter into the minutes. We always remember what we did. This is... This would be you can maybe it. exhibit one and two. Okay. Mm. And then an, yeah. Yeah, when y'all are ready. Up, Do y'all have any other questions about? It's pretty straightforward. Anybody else have any questions about? I like it. Um, the yeah, only that one change. the personnel thing. I just wanted to go over this position, and Phillips here. Have y'all met Philip? Everybody's yes, met. You saw him at the last him, meeting. Uh, at a couple of meetings ago. Right. I thought he was an attorney. Uh, <laughs> the longest time. He's so quiet, I was worried. He had well, nervous. then you knew he wasn't an attorney. A couple of right. right. There you quiet. go. Extremely right. nervous. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we've spent some time together and um, with, uh, I've worked with Philip, Philip and Darby. And one of the things Darby and Donnie talked about a lot last year, and I've learned, since I've been here is that um, our welcome center, I mean, that's the hub of activity for Fairhaven. All of our visitors uh, walk in through the welcome center. We have around, we're estimating around 26, 27,000 people that come through there. Um, we have great volunteers there, but it's inconsistent. Um, the museum right now is providing backup uh, to the welcome center as they can, which is not been that effective it's it's been very difficult on them because they're pretty crowded and I know we talked I talked with some of you about you know museums not always crowded but most of the time it's very crowded and there's a lot going on um, the museum is also capturing a lot of people that will go into the welcome center and they don't they can't get any information so they come into the museum and they can't really spend the time with the tourists or visitors here to give them information because they're giving tours and they're working with docents and volunteers, and that's another big management, um, uh, heavy lift, I would say, at the museum that they have is managing those docents and working with those volunteers, but for the, just the museum, not for the Welcome Center. The Welcome Center is a whole extra, uh, extra, I guess, thing they take on, responsibility, and it's not, it's not working well for them. The museum, it's difficult. They can't really manage it. They can't manage both, so we do. We have to figure out how to how to manage that welcome center and give the give our visitors the welcome that we th think they deserve and need, and provide the information, train the volunteers, have a more formal system for volunteer training there. Um, just we think we can do improve it a ton with very little investment. I think what we're asking for is like a thirteen dollar an hour position here for this but this is a snapshot of what they would do and it provides consistency it provides backup it allows the museum to do the museum's job which is to provide tours and history and they're going to be doing a lot more um, outreach and education with our schools and visitors and i mean philip has some great vision uh moving forward satellite exhibits full of thing, which is going to require me to leave property quite a bit to be able to do the installations. Are we on? Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll say again, we are planning to do satellite exhibits in surrounding facilities and maybe even cities around that surround Fairhope. So this will require me to leave property quite a bit and will not be able to pay the attention that is really needed to the, uh, the Welcome Center. Jimmy, I see that you and Robert is under council edit, so you guys have cut that. It was a nine twenty. It's a nine dollar an hour job as budgeted here. Mm. Um, on the, it looks like on the that's pretty much on the low end. Mm. So, can you tell me what you guys were thinking at that time? I think our our thoughts at that time were, you know, wasn't a wasn't a real expensive position. It wasn't a whole lot to cut, but we thought it could possibly be managed with just a more uh, coordinated effort. I guess a more of a 
just a better tracking system to what it seemed like was to train them and then make sure that they were on schedule and understood when they needed to be there, where they needed to be, make mm -hmm. sure it was always staffed. And we just thought a more detailed um, a spreadsheet or something to track who's there and when they need to be there would probably yeah. suffice. So that, that was just our, our logic. But I, I mean, I'm not adamantly opposed to the position or anything. It's not. Not and if you've money. done if you've done volunteer management, you know that it is it's inconsistent. A lot of times people don't show up, and when that's in a high traffic time, I mean it's it's a problem. Having somebody that we know is in charge, you know, they'll be there. That's their job to be there. I think is is much more professional and something that we need. And then they also need to train these volunteers, whoever they are. I think that we have we have great volunteers that have been there a long time, but there are also other people that would like to have the opportunity to volunteer there. But we need some formal training. We need someone to track them. We need we need a more formalized. I think we would get a lot more value out of formalizing a volunteer coordinator position throughout the city. And you see other things we have here too, like you know, lighting of the trees, girls' night out, things we do at the downtown merchants, arts and crafts. And there are a lot of needs for extra volunteers on top of our typical uh, volunteers um, or volunteer services throughout the city. So, you know, Easter Bunny, Santa pictures, all those things require somebody to be there. So having someone consistent to be sure they're there for all of these things. I mean, we're a very event heavy city and we love that about our city, but um, relying only on volunteers to, to manage a facility like this, I think is probably not the best route. And you think route. That you can find someone for $9 an hour to, to do all of the things that you've just stated that their, that their job would require if I looked at this volunteer coordinator position? I think we could find someone for between 9 and 13 an hour that's very good, that would love to do this job. You know, I'm having some indirect experience with the Welcome Center and all the events that we do there, and just kind of the traffic that comes through there, I don't think it's a bad idea to have somebody there on a, on a somebody that we pay on a yes. regular basis. Uh, but I wonder if it's some if if there's some way to make it a part-time position as opposed to a full-time position because if you're coordinating mm -hmm. part-time with volunteers, now there might be times where overtime is necessary for that part-time person because right. you have a volunteer cancel. I don't I don't know, but I, I, I the volunteers that we have there that I've dealt with over the years are some of the most wonderful people that I've met here in the city. But you're right, though, anytime you base anything on full volunteer service, there is some <coughs> liability issues that come with that. I, I do want to point out that because of that new, you know, rule with the part time, it, it they cannot work over 19 hours. Right. And when you're having a lot of events and you never know when those months are going to happen, uh, I, I, I don't think we, we would they're not going to be sitting around twiddling their thumbs. No. We'll, we'll make sure that they're they're busy and helping the museum and, and do other things. But the, that's going to be a huge liability from now on. We've got to, when we hire a part-time, we have to make sure that they do not work over 19 hours. It's going to be a big deal. And I've tried to spend a good bit of time inside the Welcome Center and just watch what goes on in there. I've been in there in times where no one's in there and I end up just talking with people that come in. Um, you know, they just have questions about right. Fairhope and that's where they go. I mean, that's where right. we go and then it's empty. Sometimes it's empty. Sometimes there's someone in there and that is sweet as can be, but you know, may say, we'll go to this restaurant or, you know, that's my favorite or don't eat there or what, you know, you just don't, there's no, we have to train them. We have to kind of, it's our responsibility as a city. I mean, and, and tourism is so huge here, and, and we want our tourists to be happy and informed and, you know, to, that's, this is where we welcome them. It's our welcome center. So I think it's a small, a very small investment, you know, for that. I don't think that's what thought. I've never had a complaint about it, but then uh, it's not a lot either. Uh, the benefits are almost as much as the salary for that position. Um, well, and there wouldn't be really any complaints in that situation from citizens. There'd be people from out of town that wouldn't know to contact you. That's true. In that that's scenario. True. Yeah, that's true too. And, and the other, the only other thing I'll point out that is on here that I think is a, a really uh, important note is, um, you know, having a way for our visitors to sign up for this Everbridge because if they're in town, especially for large events, 
we want to make sure that they are getting emergency notices from us. And then when they leave here, we want to make sure they're getting notices about things we're doing so they'll come back. So it gives us a way of staying in touch, which we haven't had before. I mean, can say you or someone else uh, from the Nick Center staff pitch in and help with that training? Those things are that vital the, right now? The, I maybe you are. I mean, that's, maybe that's what's going on now. Yeah, I think that's kind of how it's been done in the past. That's what I thought. <clears throat> And with me being right next door, it should be, I should be able to help out with that as well, the sure. training. Well, let's, we're going to have to adjourn. we got a council yep. to start in two minutes. So let's go ahead and adjourn, Eric.